What's going on everybody? We got ourselves not really a, a case study or anything, but more of a, a little bit of a how-to. And I've got a 06 Buick here. It's got an intermittent battery drain issue. It says sometimes we go out and crank it, it's fine. Some mornings it goes out, cranks it, and it's dead. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically just show you guys how I set up an overnight parasitic drain test and what you kind of need to have to do that. So of course I've got my laptop and with my laptop it is plugged up to power and my settings are set to where it never goes to sleep if it's plugged up to the charger. So as long as I don't lose power on my charger, the PicoScope will run all night long. Okay, and then the second thing I do is you got to have two channels. One, channel one, or channel A is going to be battery voltage. So I've got just a regular old lead, alligator clip to the power, and the battery negative. And the negative post I have off, okay, and so I'm alligator clipped straight to battery ground or battery negative and then positive and the reason why is channel one or channel a will basically read voltage on the battery all night so if i'm losing voltage but my current clamp here doesn't show any current draw my battery's got a weak cell that's pulling the other cells down Okay, but if I have current draw, I should see battery drain as well, or battery voltage drain. So, channel two is my amp clamp. And this amp clamp is the uh, TA473 from Pico. It is the BNC Plus, and that's the key here, BNC Plus. Uh, so, my amp clamp is powered by the Pico scope. There is no internal battery, and the reason why is because internal batteries, as they get weaker, you will get drift. This amp clamp does not drift because I have consistent power. So that's basically the two things I use, two channels, okay? And then as far as setting the Pico up, they actually have a really good guided test. So if you just click that, go to starting and charging, and then under charging, you actually have your parasitic drain clamp method. And then you just load the settings. You could see the guide, and the guide basically shows you just what I did. And this is basically just kind of a graph. Okay, so I'm gonna hit start, okay? And it's not going to lock this probe because it's not BNC plus. That's fine. I'm just going to tell it we're 1x scaling. So we're set up. And if you notice, it's got this marker here and this marker here. So this marker is 30 minutes into the capture. So the three minute marker is basically what Pico thinks your module should be asleep by. So from here to here, it basically wants to see battery voltage stay the same, current draw be zero. So let's hook up my jumper lead. So this is just a lead that is coming off the battery through my amp clamp and make sure you get your direction right. My current's gonna be flowing into the battery. And then this side is just gonna amp clamp to my, <coughs> to my battery cable here. So, as you can see, it is off the scale. That is fine. It will come down. So, once it drops down below 2 amps, you'll see it down in here. Once all the modules go to sleep. I do have everything shut other than the hood. This one doesn't actually have a hood switch, so it doesn't care that the hood's open. So, oh, look, we've already dropped down. So things are starting to go to sleep already. 
So that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna leave this like this all night. Right now, as you can see, it's four o'clock and I'm going home. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wait and let this run all night. And tomorrow morning when I come in, I will actually have several pages of waveforms so I can go back through the pages throughout the night and see if this spikes back up or not. So that's pretty much it. So good night. We'll see you in the morning and see how it done. Okay, so one thing I want to add right here. Sometimes these BNC amp clamps are a little finicky and you just kind of have to know how to deal with them. Sometimes when you have them scaled, uh, they don't re-zero back down correctly. Like, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but these clamps self-zero when they're first plugged in. So if you have a scale set, and then you plug it in and then for some reason it gets off that scale and then comes back down. Sometimes it won't come back down to actually what it's really at. Um, it just gets skewed for some reason. I don't really know why it does that, but it's just something you kind of have to keep in mind that when you're doing these, uh, using these amp clamps, that sometimes if you think something's not right, Chances are you need to unplug it, unclip it off your wire, plug it back up, let it re-zero, and then clamp it back on your wire, and then it should be fine. Um, it's just just kind of a, a little quirk that they have, and after you get used to it, you just kind of automatically recognize that, hey, this thing's not zeroed right. Um, and then of course you always need it not clamped around any wire at all when you first plug it up because if it has current flowing through it, you plug it up, uh, sometimes it'll come up if the current's enough, it'll say uh, probe not detected or not supported or something weird like that. And then sometimes it might just be zero, but really you've got current flowing through it. So if you unclipped it, it would actually dip down into like negative current. So just keep that in mind. Um, so sometimes if you're doing this, it's best to actually like hook the, the wire up to your jumper wire up, let the modules go to sleep, get it down to where it's under that two amp threshold and then clamp your wire, your jumper wire. So you get a little more accurate reading. Um, but like if you, whatever's waking up peaks above that two amp, when it comes back down under two amps, it, it might not be an accurate number anymore. So just keep that in mind. If you see one go off the scale and come back down, but yet it's 100 milliamps higher than what it was pr prior, chances are that's still the same. It just got skewed, so. Uh, if you've got something, you know, spiking up and causing that, you might want to manually change your scale to like five amps uh, or something like that. But either way, you're going to see what we're, what we're basically wanting to know in this next clip. Well, it is the next morning on the Buick. And as you can see, we've got 33 pages. It is actually still running. I've not stopped it yet and we keep getting these little spikes. That's kind of what I'm after. But like I said, this is basically just kind of a how-to on doing the overnight drain. So I'm just gonna stop this thing. And once you stop it, it basically filters all the waveforms. And the only drawback with using this amp clamp is amp clamps usually don't do good on very low current draw so like tiny milliamps and if we just basically pull this down here pull our ruler down we can see that on average this thing is saying 27 milliamps i know for a fact it is actually closer to 10 milliamps 
when it's asleep. And then we've just got all these little spikes. That's that's kind of what I'm gonna have to try to figure out what it is, is these little spikes. But you see our battery voltage here stayed basically the same all night. So I don't really see this as being a problem. And chances are this might not be significant at all. Um, so I know right now this battery will probably crank the car just based off the voltage. But what I wanted to show you was this amp clamp does not drift overnight. So even at 33 pages, so from here to here is 30 minutes. Now as you can see right now it's actually 10 a.m. And I started this at 4 p.m. yesterday. So it's actually been running this, that entire time. And so 30 minutes a page, every two pages is an hour. So 15 hours, that's actually over 15 hours, this thing's been running. So let's just scroll through these pages. On this last page, we're at 27 milliamps of current draw. Let's just go back. Let's see. Give this thing a minute to catch up here. There we go. Come on. I went too fast with it, but. We'll let it. We'll let this thing catch up. So, I mean, this, this is a lot of data, a lot of buffer it's got in here, so. Come on. Come on. Come on, little computer. But anyways, we can still see right here on page 15, even though I've got all this stuff. Come on, go away. There we go. There we go. So we are still basically floating at 27 milliamps. And our battery voltage didn't stay the same, or didn't drop. So I'm going to say right now this is not anything to worry about. But it is cool that we can see this. And if I zoom in here, you can kind of see that something turn on, turn on, just something turn it on. When it turns on, it's about 87 milliamps peaks out at and then turns right back off. Let's go a few more pages just to kind of give you an idea. So page eight, page nine. So we here we do see that the uh, current need magnifying glass. My line is slightly higher than it was. So if anything, it, it did drift up just a tiny bit, like tiny, tiny bit. So over 15 hours, that's it's not bad. And like I say, we're only looking for these little spikes. I'm, I was actually looking for something to turn on, pull a couple amps and turn off at some point in the night. And we don't have that, so very intermittent battery drain issue on this thing. So I doubt I'm really going to go much further with this, but I wanted to make this little video showing how to set up for a parasitic drain overnight with a picoscope and an amp clamp. Uh, but you do need one of the BNC Plus amp clamps with one of the newer picoscopes that have the BNC Plus connector on it. So that's it for this. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you later.